Hi, we're here at Professional Baseball Instruction in Upper Saddle River, New Jersey. My name is Doug Sinella, and I want to give you a short little tutorial on how to choose a baseball glove. Um, the major factors that you need to consider when choosing a baseball glove, one, what position do you play? That's number one. Two, how many games are you going to play, and what level of play are you going to be playing at? Those are important questions. And then the glove has to look good. You know, the person has to like the way it looks, they have to like the way it feels on their hand. It's a very personal uh, thing when you're choosing a glove. Uh, it kind of represents you on the field, the way you look, and the glove is a big part of that. So let's keep in mind the position. Gloves range in size from 10 and 3 quarter inches to 12 and 3 quarter inches. The most commonly sized used glove is 11 and a half. That's used by most shortstops, it's used by most infielders, it's used by a lot of pitchers, 11 and a half inch glove. That's the most commonly used size glove. Derek Jeter, for instance, uses this exact glove, which is 11 and a half inch Rawlings glove. And if you, I, I want to point out some of the features. When you look at a glove, you want to look and say, this, is, this type of web here is called a basket web. Some people like that, some people don't. So if you want to stick with an 11 and a half inch glove because you're a shortstop, you can also look at a glove like this. This is called a two-piece web. A lot of smaller gloves have this too. Some second basemen like to use an 11 inch glove, and most of those will have a two-piece web, just like that. So this is another 11 and a half inch glove uh, with a two-piece web. There's another web, but you've all seen this one. It's called a T-web, and that's another style of glove that some people like. This is a very common uh, web. Then we have what's called the H-Web, a lot of gloves. Not a lot of gloves have an H-Web, mostly outfield gloves use an H-Web, but uh, A-Rod has an H-Web on his glove. And then we have uh, the I-Web. This is another web that's a very popular look. So you gotta say, what position do you play? Pick out the style that you like, what type of web, and start looking at gloves, right? Put them on your hand, pound them a little bit, when you put a glove on, your hand should not go all the way into the glove. It should hang out of the glove, like, like so. I see a lot of dads and they, oh, his hand doesn't go all the way in. You don't want your hand to go all the way in. You want to have some control over your glove, and if your hand's in too far, it's, it really doesn't work. So you want your hand to be hanging out of the glove, about like that much. So those are a couple of things to look for. Um, and once again, right here I have a selection of gloves, 11 and a quarter, 11 and a half, 11 and three quarters, 12, 12 and a a half, 12 and three quarters. 12 and three quarter glove, outfield glove. That's called a modified trapeze web. And you can get a lot of range with a bigger glove. So outfielders use bigger gloves. Sometimes a pitcher would use a bigger glove. It's personal preference. I pitched professionally for 10 years. I used an 11 and a half inch glove for most of my career. I also used 11 and a quarter inch glove. I didn't like the big glove on my hand, but some pitchers do. I'll show you a glove right here. This is an 11, I'm sorry, 12 and a quarter inch, two piece web. And if you notice this little sheath, it's a finger sheath designed by Greg Maddox to hide his finger at higher levels of baseball. If a pitcher would come set and, and do this with his finger, it would tip off his pitch. So Greg Maddox in his infinite wisdom said to his company that he worked with to put a finger sheath on so I can't tip my pitches off. So this is really designed for a pitcher. Anybody can use it, but that's what this is, if any of you have a question about what that is. It's to hide the finger so the pitcher doesn't potentially tip off um, guys that are watching him. So um, now we gotta think about the level of play. If you're playing club level baseball and you're playing 50, 60, 70 games a year, you're gonna need a good glove, a glove that's gonna stand up to that sort of play. There are gloves, and here's a very good glove from Mizuno. It's made with pigskin leather, so it's not the strongest of leathers. This is really designed for Little League outfield, but it's more designed for men's softball. So 
What the glove is made with is very important. The Rawlings gloves, the heart of the hide gloves, are made with cowhide. This is a very good glove that is designed for 75 miles an hour plus. A lot of dads want to get their kids the best gloves out there, and they think the price is what drives the best glove. It's not true. The best gloves, well, let me backtrack. The most expensive gloves are made with the best leathers. Here's a Primo glove from Rawlings, $400 glove. This thing is very stiff, and it's designed for high-level play. When I say high-level, I don't mean good quality play. I'm talking the speed. So if you have guys that are throwing 80 miles an hour, this glove would make sense. If your son's in middle school or in Little League, he's 10 years old or he's 11 or 12, a Primo glove is way, way too much glove for him. In my estimation, it's kind of like if your son or daughter first starts driving and you buy them a Ferrari, you know, this would, this would be the equivalent of that in a baseball glove. They don't need a Ferrari. It's too much for them to handle. Um, so we get them something different that's made with cowhide or just regular old, uh, you know, steer hide like they have with the heart of the hide. There's also another level of glove from Rawlings called the uh, Pro Preferred, which is another high level of play designed for fast pitching, designed for quick play. Now, let's go to a few specialty gloves. You all know this one. It's the catcher's glove. And a catcher's glove, once again, the hand doesn't go all the way in. Catcher's gloves are measured by their circumference. The average size catcher's glove is 32 inches in circumference. Anything larger than that is considered big, 32 and a half, 33, 33 and a half, 34. And they're out there. There's bigger gloves out there. Some catchers feel comfortable with that. But everything's trending smaller. Most catchers that you'll see in the big leagues when they put their glove up, it's a tiny target. So. Uh, once again, with a catcher's glove, you put it on your hand, you get a good feel for it. All-Star, and we, we sell a lot of All-Star products here. All-Star makes the best catching equipment you can get, whether it's a glove, shin guards, helmet. All-Star makes, makes the best. We carry a whole bunch, but All-Star is the one that we recommend. And All-Star gloves come in a price range from 100 bucks, and you can get those for 350 Now we go to a first baseman's glove, a specialty glove designed for first. It allows the player to be able to get a better uh, way to pick the ball when it's thrown into the, into the dirt. It's called pick. Now, a first baseman's glove is a specialty glove. You can't or you shouldn't pitch with a first baseman's glove or play third base. This is designed to play first base, a specialty glove. Now, the average size of a first baseman's glove is 13 inches. That's the average size. This is a youth first baseman's glove. 12 and a half inches, but it's got a smaller opening for a smaller hand. So there are a lot of options for you when you're looking for gloves. But the main thing, you want to find a glove that you like, one that you want to be seen wearing. It has to look good to you. It has to appeal to you. So try a bunch on, punch them in your hand, because understand this. Baseball gloves come off an assembly line, and you have to put your hand in it, and you have to beat it up a little bit. You have to try to shape it to your hand. Like this glove here, it has a nice soft leather, the MVP series from Mizuno. These are considered game ready. And you want to know something? They're pretty close. Now one of the best ways to break a glove in, I've seen people put some uh, special foam and put their glove in the oven. Glove manufacturers will, dis, uh, they will not um, accept the warranty on a glove if you put it in the oven. Because what that, when you put it in the oven, what it does is it dries out the lacing and then the lacing ends up breaking prematurely. So putting your glove in the oven is probably the worst thing you can do for it. What you can do is you can spit in it. And if you ever watch a baseball game, you'll see guys spitting their glove, rubbing it in, spitting it, rubbing it in. The idea is to moisten that pocket, moisten the leather. You don't have to spit in it. That's what baseball players do. You can just use water and you rub it in. And what you do is you soften that leather up. And then you pound the glove with your hand or you can use a bat and pound the glove, simulating like you're playing catch. And then when you take that glove off, you don't want to just lay it down, you want to just either hang it or put it down on the ground like this. You don't want the glove to sit like this and just fold itself shut. You want to break the glove in around your hand. So the next day when you use it, you take the glove, spit in it, make it nice and wet, the leather gets soft, you pound it, it starts to shape to your own hand. And before long, you'll see an impression inside the glove of your hand. And now it's broken in perfectly for you. So those are the things um, that you should look for when you're breaking in 
when you're breaking in a baseball glove. Uh, so I just wanted to bring those ideas out to you and let you know the, uh, the way that PBI and, and over here in our pro shop, how we like to handle our, our glove sales. We look at 11 and a half inch first. If your son plays outfield, infield pitches, if he's, if he's a do-it-all type of guy, he should have an 11 and a half inch glove. 11 and a half, 11 and three quarters, 11 and a quarter. But 11 and a half would be a good size for him. If he's exclusively outfield, the biggest glove that he can find that he likes. If he's a, a catcher, obviously you want to get him a catcher's glove. And also for catchers, if you're a catcher, you should also consider playing first base, because that's another option for, for catchers is first base. So if you want to get, if you're a catcher and want to get him another glove, you might want to look to get him a first baseman glove. But when you search the web and when you search for your gloves, the size is important, the look is important, the price of course is important, and, uh, but just understand that the price is driven by what it's made with. The last thing I want to mention to you guys is when you talk about the size of the glove, there is no standard to measure a glove. You can put a glove on, like this one here, this is a Revo glove from Rawlings, it's a very good glove, it says it's 12 inches. If I take this glove and hold it next to this Jeter glove, I don't know, this doesn't look too much bigger than this one. There's no standard way to measure a glove. And everybody measures them slightly different. Some companies measure from the thumb down to the crease here. Some measure from the middle of the pocket, uh, I'm sorry, middle of the web, straight down to here. And some measure from here, straight through to here. So there's no standard procedure on how to measure a baseball glove. So you gotta put them on, you gotta try them. Buying a glove uh, uh, through mail order or through catalog, is good only if you've already seen the glove in person. If you've never tried the glove on and you've never done this with it, buying it online is a gamble. It's a risk. I, I wouldn't recommend it. And I mean, the prices that we have here at, at PBI, you can't find these prices on the internet. And we have gloves priced from $20 up to $400, like I said earlier. So, keeping in mind your position, the level of play, how many games, and price. And the glove has to look good. Those are the those are the major factors. So come on down to PBI. I'd be happy to show you through our showroom. Uh, look at some catalogs with you, and we can get a perfect fit for your guy or for your girl. All right. So once again, I'm Doug Sinella. Thank you for taking the time to watch this video. We look forward to seeing you here at PBI. Take care.